Brothers and sisters, good morning. Welcome to my channel. Today is Sunday and I would like to talk about praying to our Heavenly Father. When Jesus Christ was on earth, He taught to us about prayer. In 3rd Nephi chapter 18 verse 19 and stated, Ye must always pray unto the Father in my name. Now, brothers and sisters, what is prayer? Prayer is one of the greatest blessings we have while we were here on earth. Through prayer, we can communicate with our Heavenly Father and seek His guidance daily. Prayer is sincere heartfelt talk with our Heavenly Father. We should pray to God and to no one else. We do not pray to any other being or to anything made by man or God. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3 through 5 Prayer has been an important part of the gospel from the beginning of the word. An angel of the Lord commanded Adam and Eve to repent and call upon God in the name of the Son. It is found in Moses chapter 5 verse 8. Now this commandment has never been taken away, and prayer will help us draw closer to God. All of our thoughts, our words, and our actions are influenced by our prayers. We should pray for the Lord's guidance and help in our daily lives. We need to pray for our families, our friends, our neighbors, our crops, our animals, our daily work, and our other activities. We should pray for protections from our enemies in Alma chapter 34, verse 17 through verse 27. We should pray to God to express love and to feel closer to Him. We should pray to our Heavenly Father and thank Him for our wel welfare and comfort and for all things He gives unto us each day. As stated in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. We need to pray to ask our Heavenly Father for strength and to lead the Gospel. When should we pray, brothers and sisters? We can pray whenever we feel the need to communicate with our Heavenly Father, whether silently or vocally, or sometimes we need to be alone. We can pour out our souls to Him, as stated in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. In addition to that, we can pray during our daily activities. We can pray while we are in the church meetings, at home, walking down on the street, working, preparing a meal, or whether we may be, or whatever we may be doing. If we feel, we can pray at any time of the day or of the night. We can pray when we are alone, or we can pray with other people. We can pray our Heavenly Father in our thoughts and all times. We also have the privilege of praying to give thanks and ask blessings on the food we partake before each meal. We open and close our church meetings with prayer. We thank the Lord for the blessings and ask for His help so we may worship in a manner that pleases Him. How should we pray, brothers and sisters? No matter we are, whether we stand or kneel, whether we pray vocally or silently, whether we pray privately or in behalf of the group, we should always pray in faith, with sincere heart, and with real intent. As Prophet Moroni told us in Moroni chapter 10 verse 4, 
As we pray to our Heavenly Father, we shall tell Him what we really feel in our hearts, confide in Him, ask Him for forgiveness, plead with Him, thank Him, and express our love and gratitude for Him. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, as stated in there, we should always ask that His will be done, remembering that we desire may not be the best for us. In 3 Nephi chapter 18, verse 20, as stated in there, at the end of our prayer, we close in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, brothers and sisters, how are prayers answered? Our sincere prayers are always answered, but sometimes the prayer answer may be no, because what we have asked or for what we had asked not be the best for us, or sometimes the answer is yes. We have a warm, comfortable feelings about what we should do, as stated in Doctrine and Covenants section 9, verse 8. To nine. Sometimes the answer is way too wild. Our prayers are always answered at, at a time and in a way that the Lord know will help us the most. Sometimes the Lord answers our prayer through other people, a good friend, a husband or a wife, a parent, or other family members, a church leaders, or even a missionary. Any individual of this may be inspired to perform the acts that will answer our prayers. I would like to tell the true story of the experience of one of our 70, Elder Juan E. Usida, when he was a missionary in Peru. In 1977, I was serving in a full-time missionary in Costco, Peru. My companion and I received approval to take all the missionaries in the Costco zone to the magnificent Machu Picchu ruins. Towards the end of our visit to the ruins, some of the missionaries wanted to go to the Inca Bridge and far to the mountain trail. But immediately, I felt in my heart the Spirit constraining me not to go there. The trail was on the side of the mountain with a 2,000 foot or 610 meters drop off. In several areas, the trail was only wide enough for one person to pass on at a time. My companion and I told them that we should not to go to the Inca Bridge. However, the missionaries insisted that we go. The pleadings became more intense and despite what the Spirit had indicated to me, I gave in to the peer pressure and told them that we would visit the bridge but only if we were very careful. We entered the trail that leads to the Inca Bridge with me at the end of the group, and at first everyone walked slowly as agreed. Then the missionaries started to walk very fast and even running. They ignored my petitions to slow down. I felt obligated to catch up to them, to tell them that we had to turn back. I was far behind them, and I had to run past to catch up with them. As I came around a turn in a passage too narrow for two to walk, I found a missionary standing still with his back against the rocks. I asked him why he was standing there. He told me he had received an impression to remain in that spot for a moment 
and that I should go on. I felt the urgency to catch up to those ahead of us, so he helped me to pass him. And I was, and I was able to get a little pass further down the trail. I noticed that the ground was full of granary. I planted my right foot on the ground, realizing as I feel that there was no ground underneath the granary. I desperately grabbed onto one branch, some branches that were underneath the trail. For a moment, I could see down some 2,000 feet below under me. The Orumbaba River, which crosses the sacred valley of the Incas. I felt as in my strength had left me, and it was only a matter of time before I could not hold on anymore. In that moment, I prayed instantly. It was a very brief prayer. I opened my mouth and said, Father, help me. The branches were not strong enough to support the weight of my body. I knew the end was near. In the very moment when I was about to fall down, I felt a firm hand take me by the arm and pull me up. With that help, I was able to continue fighting and get myself back on the trail. The missionary who who had stayed behind was the one who saved me. But in reality, our Heavenly Father saved me there. He listened to my voice. I had heard the voice of the Spirit three times before, telling me not to go to the Anchor Bridge. But I had not obeyed that voice. I was in shock. I was afraid. I did not know what to say. Then I remembered that the other missionaries were ahead of us, and so we went looking for them. Until we found them and told them what had happened to me. As we returned home, or to return to the Machu Picchu very carefully and in silence, on the return trip, I remained silent. And the idea came to my mind that he had paid attention to my voice, but I had not paid any attention to his. There was a deep pain in my heart for disobeying his voice, and at the same time, a deep sense of gratitude for his mercy. He did not exercise his justice upon me, but in his great mercy, he had saved my life. Uh, stated in Alma chapter 26 verse 20. At the end of the day, when it was time for my personal prayer, I prayed from the heart to the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. As stated in Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3. I prayed with a sincere heart and with real in faith intent having faith in Christ as stated in Moroni chapter 10 verse 4 in the early morning of the same day I had prayed with my lips and when I was about to perish I prayed from the heart to him I pondered upon my life to that point I found that on many occasions our Father in heaven had been so merciful unto me. He taught me many lessons that day in Machu Picchu and in Cusco, Peru. One of the greatest lessons was that I should always, always pray to our Heavenly Father with sincere heart, with real intent, exercising our faith in Jesus Christ. Another story of a young mother that his baby was injured 
in an accident at home. She had no way to get the baby to a doctor. She was very new in the neighborhood and did not know her neighbors. The young mother prayed for help. In a few minutes, a neighbor came to the door, knocking and saying, I had a feeling I should come and see if you needed my any help. And the neighbor helped the young mother get the baby to a doctor. Often God gives us the power to help answer our own prayers as we pray for help. We should do all we can to bring about the things we desire. On one occasion, the Lord Jesus Christ was praying in a certain place. And when he says, one of his disciples said unto him, in Luke chapter 11 verse 1, Lord, teach us to pray. Then he taught his disciples to pray. And today, he teaches you and me to pray. As we see him, in our minds, praying in Gethsemane and saying, in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. When you pray, Father, brothers, and sisters, do you really tr or truly want that not my will be done or by the will of the Father? Paul described how Jesus prayed in the days of his place, especially in Gethsemane, when he had offered up a prayers and supplications with strong crying and thirst unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he prayed. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, when you pray, are you really praying or just saying a prayer? Are you super special with your prayers? Jesus prayed instantly and spoke with his father. In Luke chapter 3 verse 21, and it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. When you pray, brothers and sisters, do you feel like heaven is open? When was the last time you felt that the connections with heaven with you? So answer it in your mind individually. Jesus prepared himself to make important decision by praying to his father. He went out into the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer in God. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose the twelve. In Luke chapter 6, verse 12 to verse 13. Do you prepare yourselves to make important decisions by praying? Or to your Heavenly Father, do you prepare yourselves for a moment of prayer? When Jesus came to the American continent, he taught the people to pray. In 35 chapter 19 verse 26, And Jesus said unto them, Pray on, nevertheless they did not cease to pray. They continue praying. Jesus invites us to pray always in Doctrine and Covenants, section 10, verse 5. Jesus knows that our Heavenly Father hears and gives what is the best for us, and why it is that sometimes we don't want to receive it. Why? Because sometimes we are not worthy to receive the answer of our prayer. At that very moment, we say, Father in heaven, He hears our prayers and is sensitive to us, our needs. And so His eyes and His ears are now connected to you. 
unto us. He reads our minds. He fills our hearts. You cannot hide anything from Him. Now the wonderful thing is that He will see you with eyes of love and mercy and love and mercy that we cannot fully understand. But love and mercy are with Him the very moment you see Father in heaven. God said, I will always be Father. Even to feel sometimes. But I am here listening to you. But the thing is, are you willing to be my son and daughters? The moment we pray with faith, with real intent, having faith in Him, He will manifest the truth to be at hand to you by the power of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. I know these things to be true, brothers and sisters, as we live the gospel of Jesus Christ and pray always. You will have the joy and happiness. In Doctrine and Covenant, section 112, verse 10, it says, and I call, Be thou humble, and the Lord thy God shall lay thee by the hand, and give the answer to thy prayers. Heavenly Father was in there, always waiting for your prayer. Not can you shall receive us and it shall be given unto you in the name of jesus christ amen